What's going on, everyone? It's Andy Singer with the Heartland Institute, bringing you more from climaterealism.com. So today we're going to talk about why a lot of the temperature stations around the United States are inaccurate. When I say inaccurate, they are showing more warming than what's actually taking place. Well, why is this? First, it's, it's a really simple, to be honest. It's a very just intuitive thing. But if you go into the middle of a parking lot with black asphalt, do you think it's going to be warmer there? Or do you think it's going to be warmer in the middle of a grassy field? It's going to be warmer on the parking lot with the black asphalt. And that's what's known as our urban heat island. It's essentially where heat is amplified in certain areas due to artificial means. So in the middle of cities and parking lots, just places like that versus in nature. So it's not indicative of like actual temperatures increasing. It's just that, oh, well, there's a lot of buildings here. There's a lot of gravel, asphalt, whatever. So temperatures are a little higher. Now, many of the temperature stations in the United States are in these urban heat islands. And that's why they are faulty. And here's what I'll say. Almost half of reported US warming disappears when reporting only the uncorrupted stations. So the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, they have stations all around the United States. My colleague Anthony Watts has done a lot of work on it and he found that the majority of them are faulty. And by faulty, they're near urban heat islands. When you eliminate those and you only report the stations that are actually bringing uncompromised data in, much of the warming that's been reported eliminated. It's literally due to development. It's not due to actual overarching trends. Here, let me actually show you a few pictures of what I'm talking about. All right, so you're checking out a weather station used for climate data in the middle of a parking lot at the University of Arizona Atmospheric Sciences Department in Tucson. So obviously this station is gonna report higher temperatures than what are actually taking place. It's near cars, it's in the middle of a parking lot, it's near buildings. It's, it's definitely gonna be faulty. Here's another one. This is a NOAA temperature sensor used for climate data, of course, located on a street corner in Admore, Oklahoma. And this as well, it's going to be corrupted due to the presence of the street right next to it, to the buildings near it, the cars nearby. This is just another urban heat island that's going to corrupt the data coming out from this weather station. And it's going to show more heating, more warming than actually exists. On average, urban heat islands increase the global surface temperature by almost 50% that much. Almost 90% of U.S. temperature stations have been compromised by urbanization effects. That means 90% of the weather stations out there that are reporting the temperature that we're told is creating the crisis is due to an urban heat island, that warming that, that is observed. And the warming is still not catastrophic, but what they are observing is, is not even what's actually happening. It's just due to urbanization and urban heat islands. So the truth is, temperatures that are being reported aren't even true. We're, we're literally just using these, these temperature stations that were created long ago that probably were in rural areas at the time, but as development has continued to push out and expand, they're actually now in urban areas that are just reporting way too high of temperatures. So the temperature readings are faulty. And we at the Heartland Institute are of the opinion that we should only report the data that's not dealing with urban heat islands. But apparently a lot of climate alarmists don't agree with that. I wonder why. It's Andy Singer with the Heartland Institute. I hope this helps you out. Until tomorrow. Peace.